Okay, while well, we wait for, for the last people to drop in, um, who knows Hazelcast? Okay, who works with Hazelcast in production? All right. Somebody played with Hazelcast Jet so far? No. That's a good start because you guys will all learn something important. <laughs> okay. So, um, this is a completely new talk. It's actually the first time I'm going to give it. So, uh, there are some slides where you figure out you have to laugh and we cut this out of the recording. Uh, so, I'm um, doing it before. Oh, time is already running. Okay. Um, so, there are a couple of slides where you have to laugh and you figure out where the position is. So, just feel free to laugh whenever you like to. Okay, so um, Hazelcast Jet, um, writing the jet stream. There is a more secret title here, and that's what I'm gonna call it. Fun with Hazelcast Jet, right? Okay, so as I said, you figure out there are a couple of slides where you have to love. So let's start with a couple of disclaimers. It's a little bit of a Hazelcast IMDG, which is like the original Hazelcast thing. And for the people that already know it, it's like, yeah, it's like the boring part. Uh, there's still coffee outside, I guess. So you can get, grab some coffee because the cool part starts afterwards. And there will be a lot of Hazelcast Jet afterwards. The second disclaimer, and I think that's the more important one, you kind of got this probably already if you know my t kind of talks. There's a lot more of Big Bang Theory. So I hope you've seen it all. If not, uh, there are a couple of doors, uh, or you just keep like your hands before your eyes and like, nah, I don't want to see it. All right, so me, I'm working for Hazelcast. You kind of guessed that, I guess, by now at least. Um, I'm manager of developer relations. That means I'm normally doing exactly what I do now. I'm standing somewhere in the world, somewhere at a stage, talking about some, I would say, random shit. Um, but most of the time, it's meaningful, sometimes at least. Um, I'm doing Java for a long time. It says 10 plus years. Uh, some slides say uh, 12 plus years. I actually just stopped counting. So it's something for a long time, whatever it means. And normally, what I do in my free time is always like extremely performance related, garbage collection, this kind of stuff that nobody actually wants to do, right? It's like, who loves garbage collection optimization? Heinz is not here anymore, right? OK, <laughs> fair enough. So one person. Um, uh, benchmarks. Who likes benchmarks? Doing benchmarks, micro benchmarks, all this kind of stuff. Who believes in benchmarks? Who thinks AMD is faster than NVIDIA? Or the other way around? Okay, perfect. <laughs> so you, you guys see what I mean, right? Okay, so, and most importantly, I'm not crazy. My mother tested me. I'm 100% sure I'm not crazy, most of the time. So let's get in, right? Let's put some action onto it. And we start with a mini big bang jet, mini big jet bang theory. Man, that's that's hard to do, and I it sounded better when I tried it. The mini big jet bang theory. So let's do a quick story recap, right? Uh, as I said, Hazelcast IMDG. After we created Hazelcast Jet, we kind of rebranded the original Hazelcast. So whenever you see Hazelcast IMDG, that is like the official original Hazelcast kind of thing. And it all started by, hey, we want to have something which is easy to use. Easy to use for Java programmers means you use Java APIs, right? So um, in this case, and that's already like the preparation for the amazing talk we're going to do, um, we see we have a Java util uh, map with two strings. So generics is string strings. And we call it transcripts. You will figure out in a bit why we call this map transcripts. And instead of saying, hey, give me a hash map, like the new hash map, new concurrent hash map kind of thing, you ask Hazelcast for a map. That's easy, right? So let's, let's do it first, right? Let's go straight to some coding. Just wanted to do it a little bit different, but we're going straight to coding. So Hazelcast, as I said, we're doing a little bit of Hazelcast IMDG because you guys are all need to get up to speed. So Hazelcast is all about clusters. And clusters means you have to have a cluster, right? It means you have to have more than one JVM at least, or one more, more than one node. So you have Hazelcast instance, which is like the entry, and, and you guys can read it in the back. Do I need to make it a little bit bigger? That's perfect, okay. I'll still do it bigger. 
So uh, Hazelcast instance is like the entry point into the Hazelcast world. So if we remember the slide, there was Hazelcast dot or HZ dot get map, and they will come back to that in a second. And here is the magic trick, right? I said we need to create a Hazelcast cluster, and a Hazelcast cluster is literally like that line of code. I can start that. I actually can prove that it does. So I can start this up, and it will create a OneNote cluster right after compiling. There you go. A OneNote cluster, who thinks that sounds about right? OneNote cluster, probably not, right? It's an oxymoron. It doesn't really make sense. So uh, let's start it a second time. And the interesting magic trick here, and uh, we're doing some amazing black magic, right? So every new developer that joins Hazelcast has to learn like this magic at a boot camp, two weeks boot camp. You see, it joined together two nodes. By default, it uses multicast for the amazing out-of-the-box experience for developers. But because we know that multicast is like the creation of the devil, so if you ask like your infrastructure team, nobody wants multicast, you can configure IP addresses, you can configure the service discovery, whatever you like, right? So as long as you can tell Hazelcast how to find IP addresses, we're good to go with that. So let's stop it for a second again. So we say we, we actually do something which looks familiar to Java developers, right? So let's comment that out for a second and say, okay, I have a map, and you see it's a Java util map, and we're going back to this. I'm just doing a little bit different one this time, and normally you would say something like, come on, hash map, there we go. And then we write some meaningful Java code. Like we create a thousand integers, and we put them into the, into the map, something like value i. That looks very familiar, right? I, you guys are all Java developers. Is there anyone who's not Java, who do, doesn't understand the code? OK, fair enough. Yeah. What's your programming language? C <laughs> you were just faster. <laughs> you were fast, just faster. So you've, you've seen already the answer. Normally, my question is, how much code do I need to change to make this a distributed map? And distributed means that all my members in the cluster will see the same data. And the answer is simple. You remember that, right? And I just give it a name. Let's call it J prime, something like that. So now I create a Hazelcast node, and I put in some data. And as long as every, everyone accessing the same cluster um, agrees on the data structure and the name of the data structure, it will see the same data. So let's put the data in. We start, actually start the node. And we take some amazing capability of Java, because Java can just leave this running in the background, and I can change the code. Isn't that cool? So we, ha we have this Java process running in the background, right? So I said that in a cluster, I can access those data. So I'll just take a new, a new JVM and say map get and give me some meaningful number. What is the most important number in the world? And we're not in India because in India it's zero. It's 42, right? As I said, in India it's, it's zero because everything starts from zero. That's what I learned when I was in India a couple of weeks ago. It's not in Pascal. <laughs> it's not in Pascal. And not in Delphi. And not in a Visual Basic. There are a couple of weird languages that use one-based systems. And there we go, value 42. You see, two JVMs running here and here. And the second JVM can just access the value because it actually joined the cluster. I can make this even a non-Hazelcast member. So I can just say, hey, uh, whoops. I can make this a client just like a JDBC client. You can imagine something like that, right? And I can run the same code. And here's, here's another beauty, right? I'm just changing this one line. Instead of creating a new Hazelcast cluster node, I say, OK, I want to connect to this cluster right now as a client, as a proxy system. And I still get the same data. Pretty simple stuff. OK. So let's stop this and get back to wherever it is. There we go. OK. So what does Hazelcast actually do? Hazelcast stores the data in a cluster, in a clustered environment, and there are two options to do that. The first one is replication, right? Re replication means every node will keep all the data, and it's 
totally um, equal which node I actually will, will access. We'll all return in the same data. What Hazelcast does is we store data in a partitioned fashion. Partitioned is not a new concept. Uh, if you ask your relational database administrator about charting, uh, they normally drop like a tier or two, um, but they know exactly what you mean, right? Charting means you actually put multiple subsets over different systems, and that's what Hazelcast does, but it does it by default and does it transparently to the application. So the way it works, you see, you have these multiple colored dots in, on the top. These are like the own, this is the own data set of this node, and you see there are some dots on the bottom which actually are the, the uh, replicas or the backups of the different systems. So that means if you, use, if, if you lose one of these nodes in the top, you still have all the backups and you can um, recreate the state without losing actually any data. So, and another quick demo. That was the part where the demo was actually planned. So, uh, but we're, we're agile. We're agile all the time. Uh, we learn to be agile in the development team, so, right? We need to do that. So let's get back a little bit. And this time, we want to show that we actually distribute data. And there is a very easy way to show that. So first of all, we add the second most important thing for any Java program. It's very, any, who, who created a UI in the past or any, had, had a progress bar at any time in this program? <laughs> How many did it thread sleep in the progress bar just to make it look more important? <laughs> right? But these days, I mean, we're, we're at higher Java levels. We can do this better. And this is something where you really, really can impress your colleagues. Did you know that? Isn't that a beauty? Right, so, okay, same thing. So what, what actually happens is now we're putting a new value every second, right? Pretty simple stuff. <laughs> there we go, there's our one node cluster. And this time we're gonna change it a little bit, right? We want to show that we actually partition the data inside of the cluster, which means a little bit of everything should drop in at different places. So in, in the Java world, we normally do this with Listeners, observer, observable, um, what else? There are so many different names by now, right? But I, I normally stay with listener. So I call this my listener, and I say, hey, um, we're adding entries, so probably we want an entry added listener, and because we love our generics so much, we just add them as well. Who likes generics? Who, who, who would like generics that actually exist at runtime? <clears throat> Okay, <laughs> and another important feature, and I'm pretty sure everyone knows what that is, logging, right? Amazing logging. So we said that Hazelcast stays to the Java APIs, right? But obviously, it doesn't work for everything. So um, Hazelcast has extensions of these default interfaces whenever it is meaningful for a distributed environment. And listeners are obviously meaningful, at least from my point of view, so we have this I interfaces. I map, I list, I, I probably by now. And we see that I, I map is an extension of the Java util concurrent concurrent map, which means you get all the cool atomic functions like put if absent or replace out of the box. But you get all the cool distributed stuff as well. And a distributed listener is obviously distributed, right? The map contract doesn't know about anything about listeners. So what we do is we say, okay, I have a new listener, and I put this in, and I don't think I, I talk for a thousand seconds yet. And I say, I want to have true. And for the people in the front, I'm not sure if you can read it in the back, it says include value is like the second property. That's a very cool feature of IntelliJ by now. It's a very, very cool feature. So include value means the event that is actually sent, right, this event here, should it contain the, the value as well or only the key, right, key value or key only. If I just need the key to kick off some other calculation and I probably have like a 10 megabyte value, why should I send the value around the cluster just to throw it away afterwards, right? In this case, we want to make sure we see it. So I stop this like two more times 
And now we have a free node cluster. And here's the important thing. Free nodes mean we actually partition between three different nodes. But the first node doesn't have the listener, right? So we won't see anything on the first node. That one just stays like whatever. But we see the second one and the third one actually have information. But what we see is we have key 166, 67, 68, 69, 70, so everything. That's probably not what we want because the other one has all the values as well, right? So in this case, we get all the events. Imagine you have a web shop and you want to take this capability that data is actually partitioned to send out confirmation emails and you use the wrong version to register your listener. And you have a 100 node cluster, your customer re retrieves 100 confirmation emails. He's either extremely sure you, his order was arrived or has arrived, or he will never actually buy anything again, which is more probably. So what we have is at local listener. And for the local listener, we don't have this second parameter because the value is anyways local, so it doesn't really matter if we, we don't have to send it around. And if I start that two times, it will actually do exactly what we're looking for. So they're connecting. Uh, that one seems good. There we go. So let's make this a little bit smaller. And we see 235, 239. Uh, 236, 237, 238, 240. And obviously, as I said, the first one gets some values as well. So now we get exactly this behavior that we expect from a partition system. Every key just ends up on a very specific note. Very nice. Question so far? No, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, there, there, yeah, uh, so there's no replication, there's backups. So whenever you put a value somewhere, um, if we go back to, to the slides, um, there are backups on other nodes. And the backups are actually spread around the cluster. So if, one, if two nodes go... Uh, no, you won't receive notification from the backup. OK, so distributed computing doesn't need to be hard, right? So, and here, here comes the interesting part, and I hope everyone has like his coffee by now. Do you want to see the little secret? It actually took a while to come up with this amazing example. And you remember we named the map transcript in the original slide? Here is the reason why. We're doing a word count. So how many people have seen word count demos so far? I guess a couple, right? Word count is, is simple and it's not very meaningful. Normally you have like a lorem ipsum. I tried to come up with something cooler and we'll see it in a second. So word count, for people that don't know the algorithm yet, it is fairly simple. You have for each sentence in a transcript, so for every single sentence in a text, you do a, another split, so for each word in a sentence, and then you say, okay, now per word, just count it up. How, many, how often does the word actually exist in this text? Like word, word frequency. Fairly, fairly simple. And I see Philip needs to take some pictures for his next talk. What is the easiest way to describe word count? <laughs> so word count is simple as long as you don't take a closer look. And you will see why. So we took some more, some more thinking on that. And we're doing it with Java 8 streams. I hope you all are familiar with, with Java 8 so far. Yes? Some people still on Java 4? <laughs> 5? Oh, oh, poor you. <laughs> Java 5? Oh, wow. More poor you. <laughs> OK, Java 8. Uh, where's my ID? There we go. Uh, there's still something running. We kill it. There you go, now it's gone. Okay, uh, we're gonna cope this from, from the start, and as I said, it's the first time, so there's a high chance I do some, pro uh, some mistakes. I, in the worst case, have a full running version right here, I'm just trying to do it. Um, so let's call this J prime. Uh, we actually do Java util uh, juice, Java util stream. Java, utils, whatever. Uh, 
I at least was meaningful enough to create some helper methods, right? Helper methods like, and I'm gonna use those, so I'm, I'm actually honest. So I have something which reads in my transcripts, which are over here, um, and puts it into a stream, a stream of strings. Pretty simple stuff. So you remember, word count is easy, right? The interesting part, who, who've seen uh, Philip's talk earlier? Anyone? So what, what is the problem if you try to split words? You have to create a stamped version of the word, which is like the base version, and there is a little bit more. So for transcripts, you actually have to remove all those stupid signs which don't, uh, don't count as white spaces right here. And you just use replace, right? Because we're easy, we're easy going. Um, what else? Um, you, you remove um, the, the high comma and you try to figure out if, if it's a stop word or not because we don't want to count stop words. We're going back to the slides in a second to figure out why. So I'm actually using those kinds of things, right? So there is, um, uh, where is it? Prepare map, right? So we have a map of string, strings, file name and, and sentence. Uh, file name and, and uh, text, transcripts, and uh, we have prepare map, which takes, I think, uh, what is it? Oh, the map, right. So in this case, just in your hash map. Sure, and it throws an exception, like everything good in Java. Okay, so transcripts, um, 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 and you see I'm already stuttering, that's not too good, uh, stream, uh, values, stream, and we need to actually flat map it. So who's familiar with flat map? So, okay, so we have a map of texts and we need to create a, a stream. Uh, we, we have a stream of texts and we want to create a stream of, of words, right? And here goes the um, text. Oops. Uh, I always need to look up the names of the, of the function. String, stream, there we go. And we put in the text. So that does all the hard working for us. It does all the, the um, Splitting, so it actually uses a string tokenizer. It removes all the commas and colons and whatever keeps over, keeps left. It does all the stamming and sing, so it changes uh, plurals into singulars and all this kind of stuff, right? So we want to make it simple. So we say, okay, we have the word and we just make it lowercase. And then we have a collect function. And for Java Util Stream, this is fairly easy. Because Java Util Stream has uh, grouping, um, collectors, collectors grouping, uh, group by, sorry, grouping by, um, and um, uh, it has what is it? Function identity, which returns the word itself, and there is collectors grouping, I guess. Uh, counting, sorry, counting. So what that does is we change the words that come out of this second stream into lowercase, and then we say, okay, now we want to group by, by the word, and we want to count how often this word e exists, right? Very simple stuff. Um, that actually returns, uh, where is it? Introduce local, uh, whatever we're gonna call it. Uh, let's make it a little bit more readable. So it looks meaningful at least. There we go, something like that. It looks very meaningful, right? Okay, now we take the, the now we have this like uh, map of the word and the count. So let's, let's just print it out, right? We just do something fairly simple here, uh, map, entry set, stream, and we say, well, 
for every stream. Um, oh, we can actually make it easier. We can just say for each system out print line, something like that. And if we run that, oh no, before we actually run it, let's quickly go back to the slides for a second because we, we missed something so far. So all of these, all of these demos are completely Trump approved, right? What we actually do is we measure his vocabulary. And you can guess what happens, there is not a lot of it. So, we're actually gonna run this. And what we see is we get a whole list of words. Uh, I forgot to, well, let's do it quickly. I forgot to actually um, sort it. Oh, well, we forgot to sort it, doesn't matter because I already, I already like found the best examples of his vocabulary. It's very interesting. So we have great American job, <laughs> right? And these are all like one after another. So I only took the examples that are very obvious. Great American job, good America, who guessed that? You have bad work day, that's probably very true for him as well. We have illegal talk, he does a lot of that. Right? You figure out there is a meaning behind all his sentences, right? Money bring problem. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary criminal family. <laughs> and drug heart. <laughs> and that you can read for yourself. History terrible, forget education. That's a good one, right? It's unfortunately only like 15 times. But for your convenience, I uploaded the whole, the whole result set to, uh, to, to GitHub as a, as a gist. And feel free to find more examples. There's hilarious ones, even better than this ones. And there, by the way, all the sources in the, in the bottom, right? So if you really want to read what he said, um, you can do it. But I tell you, it's not too amazing. Okay, so here's the problem, right? Uh, so far, we can just do it with a Java Util stream in a, single, in a single instance. It's not a problem, but we're not done with Trump yet. So he's talking a bull, lot of bullshit each day. So by, at some point, we get into this like big data kind of use case, <laughs> right? We can't store it in a single machine anymore. And there is a better picture for that. Not even Jesus can store big data in a single machine. So, we actually need to scale, right? So how do we scale? And obviously, Sheldon is clever, so he knows. DAX, who heard of DAX before? Directed acyclic graphs. Okay, some people, that's good. So you can tell me if my explanation is completely wrong. So a DAX is basically um, like a graph system where the, all the graphs go into one direction, um, but they don't have to be like a single, a single flow. So you see there's some branching and some merging going on, and you actually can, could have multiple input sources. So that's a kind of interesting use case. Uh, we're not going to, too deep to that uh, today. Um, but for example, instead of uh, reading all the stop words up front, you could actually to do uh, two uh, sources. One is the texts, and one would be the, the stop words. And then you could do it on the fly. That would be interesting for Elasticsearch, for example, if they... <laughs> what? What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, so how does it work for Hazelcast? Or, sorry, Hazelcast Jet, because that is our DAC engine. So Hazelcast Jet takes this graph, or this DAC, and distributes it to the systems. And you can actually figure out, or you can define how many of each, each of those vertexes, these are the little, the little dots, each, how much of each of those vertexes I actually want to have? Do I want to have one per node, or do I want to make sure that this is actually just running a single time inside of the cluster, so everyone has to send to a single node? But the interesting thing is, because that's a graph, you can just push more and more data, 
and it gets processed on the fly. So you don't actually have to keep it in memory for processing or after processing. You only get this intermediate result. So we have problem, right? So Hazelcast Jet does Java util stream implementation. But stream, the whole stream framework uses function and predicate and all those kinds of interfaces, and none of those is actually serializable. It is a big problem if you, if you create a distributed framework like Hazelcast. So every time we find an interface which is not serializable in any kind of form, it's like for us like, ah, oh, bummer. We have to do it ourselves again, again, and again. So what we actually have is we have all those functional interfaces and have distributed versions of that, which is basically just an extension of the interface plus serializable. Because that is interesting. Who knows that all lambdas are serializable in Java by default? There's only one important thing that you need to do. You have to cast it to serializable. And just for the sake of the, of the joke, it actually looks pretty stupid. So if you do like, um, if you do like uh, uh, the, the cast, so that would be, um, what is it, um, a function. So function of something and serializable, right? You can do that in Java. It looks completely insane doing like a double cast, and let's put it somewhere here so you can actually read it, right? A double cast in Java, but it works. And that actually makes the lambda serializable by default. That is part of the specification. So that's cool. Uh, let's, let's fix that, because otherwise I can't compile the rest of the code. So now we want to go and make this like a Hazelcast Jet example. And that is pretty, pretty simple. So the way it works is, we go ahead and remove that. We're almost there. And this time, instead of using like the Hazelcast instance, you remember, right? We're using Jet. And you kind of figure out there's some meaningful similarity between Jet and Hazelcast. We say, OK, please create me a, a Jet instance. And you get Jet, which, a Jet instance, which is now like the entry point into the Jet system. So let's move that away. OK, we still have that. But instead of using a hash map this time, we ask Jet for, please give me a map. Um, we call it transcripts. And that actually returns, and that is interesting, an iStream map. So what we did is we created, um, uh, let's call it map for now. Um, string, string, <sighs> generics. What did I say? We love them, right? Um, so iStream map now offers a Hazelcast uh, map version, which is streamable. Very interesting. So we put this in here. So we actually read all the texts in there. And then we have something uh, which is a little bit different. So we still, well, let's do it that way. We still do the stream. Uh, let's call it map two. I get it. Map two, whatever. Um, we still do a flat map, right? Um, the interesting thing now is, uh, I'm not sure if you can actually see that. Um, well, we need to make it a little bit different. Um, oh, well, I'm fair enough. I need to look it up. <laughs> uh, transcripts. Oh, right. Uh, that, that was way. Where is it? There you go. Uh, no, no, no. Right, and then we use the transcripts map, which is now map two. Should have made it re correct. And then we have the, the version I was looking for. So for the people in the front, you still probably can't see it. It says distributed stream. So this is like the stream extension from Hazelcast or from Hazelcast Jet. It is now a distributed stream. And that works pretty much the same way as the normal stream. It is just in a way that Hazelcast or that Jet is actually able to distribute this function. So. Uh, we just change a little bit of code. So we have grouping, uh, which is this time distributed collectors grouping, uh, or group by. Um, and instead of function identity, we have, um, um, what is it, whole, whole item, which does exactly the same thing. It gives you 
or it is just a function returning the same word or the same en uh, entry object. And instead of collectors, we now have counting distributed collectors. And what is happening here? Oh, right, it's, it's an entry this time. So we can move that away, we don't need that. So now we can actually run that. Um, but we just do a little different. Uh, we're going back to, to clients. And uh, where is it? I have a JET server. And the JET server is as simple as that, so I'm not writing that. And I want to show something. So I'm just starting like two JET servers right now. So we have a cluster of two nodes. And I'm going to run the example. And the client obviously will connect to the cluster. It will execute the operation. And it, uh, so it will, it will create this stack underlying or that we created by Java YouTube stream. We'll send it to the cluster. The cluster is going to execute it, right? And some of the node, not that one, that one will actually take this graph. And you see, we created a couple of vertexes. So we just use Java util stream, but what happens underneath is Hazelcast translate that into a deck, a deck graph, so a, a direct acyclic graph. And you see, we have something where we read from the map, which is called transcripts. We have a transform, which is actually our, um, our flat map. We have an accumulator, which um, does a pre-accounting or pre-aggregation on the node itself. And then we have a combiner, which takes those two intermediate results from the different nodes and actually combines them into the final system or in, into the final result. If you're familiar with MapReduce, it kind of sounds familiar, right? And eventually, we just return it uh, as, as, an, as a data structure. And you see there are edges, so vertexes and edges are like the parts of the graph, and the edges are always between the different stages. So I don't do branching, so the, the graph is actually pretty simple, it's just like a single graph going straight from left to right. Pretty, pretty simple stuff. And I have 30 minutes left, so we should be good in time. Uh, where are we are? There we are. Okay. So we can actually run this distributed with fairly simple changes in the system, right? You've seen I missed a couple of slides. <laughs> As I said, it's the first time, so I'm okay. But sometimes you want to go a little bit deeper and you want to bring together what belongs together. And it, sometimes it takes a long time. I'm not sure you guys all seen this epi this, these episodes. Who figured that it was way overdue? <laughs> so, will you DAC me? Okay, I'm not co coding that. I'm fair enough to say I'm not too deep into the Java, uh, the Hazelcast Jet framework myself. Uh, it is very complex. There's a lot of low level stuff. If you really need this power, it is amazing. So the DAC engine itself is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's just very complicated. So I'm not going to try to write it right now. Uh, I'll probably need like 100 more times of trying. So what we actually have here, and you see that, and this time it will show you the real result, what I was looking for. So we prepared the map again, right, over here. Uh, we already figured out that this is reading the text files. By the way, the text files look pretty simple. It is just plain text. Uh, I removed all the like Trump reporter, Trump some other guy, Trump whatever. And you create a deck over here. And then we go ahead and actually create those, those vertexes. So that is our first vertex. And you remember, we need to read it from the map somehow. We need to get the, the values from, from which are already stored in Hazelcast. So we say, please read values from a map which is called transcripts, the one we just uh, filled up here. And we create this, this vertex and we give it the name source. So the first parameter is always like the name where I, that I use to uh, access the vertex. Then we create something which is tokenized Tokenize in this case is not completely correct because it does way, way, way more transformation than just tokenizing the words, right? You remember removing all the comma and colon and blah, blah, blah. Um, we do a lowercase, 
We do a group and accumulate. So that's the accumulate phase. That is actually running, sorry, this is actually running on the nodes. So if I transfer this DAG to two different nodes, it, this accumulate state will run on both nodes and does this pre-calculation. So I don't know, there is like Trump five times on that node and Trump four times on that node for whatever reason. So now I have like these two intermediate results, so I need to finally combine them together. And you see why I actually don't want to write this right now, right? Um, unfortunately, I've, I was complaining about generics all the time. This API so far doesn't have generics, so you have to manage all this by yourself by saying, hey, by the way, this is a map entry of string and long. And that makes it only more com uncompelling or more complicated. So that's, that's a problem in itself, and that will be fixed in the future. I complained a lot about that while, write, uh, while getting into JET. And we do some more. So we get the key. Uh, that actually extracts the key that we want to store it with. So that's a key extractor function. That is our initial value for combining. Obviously, we start by zero, or by counting with zero. And then we get our count and the entry. And the count and the entry says, well, so that's the current count of the operation. So we already get like from the last operation steps, we get the count in. And our value is like the count that is actually coming from the intermediate result. So we just sum that up. And that will ex uh, execute a couple of times for a two node cluster, we execute two times. In this case, I'm actually writing into another map. So we have this write map here. And I call it intermediate just for the sake of simplicity because I can access the map here again. And then we just say, okay, now I have my edges. And here it is where it becomes interesting. So I have a, um, an edge between source and tokenize. So far it is easy, right? Uh, we get the source and we want to tokenize the, the text. And there is local parallelism one. And that actually makes sure that every single text is just executed on a single machine. So you don't want to have the same text on all machines. You could do that, right? Same for tokenize. I want to make sure that the word is actually just tokenized on a single machine, uh, so I get the same words or the same text tokenized only once. And then we have like lowercase to accumulate, and here, become, here it is where it gets interesting. So now I say, okay, I want this uh, lowercase value to be partitioned based on the hash value or based on the hash code of the object, right? Whole item, again, ret returns the, the word itself. And then I say, please take the hash function to make this, in, uh, to partition it into the Hazelcast system. And after the accumulation, there is another step where I take all those intermediate results, which are partitioned inside of the system right now. And for two nodes, it's easy because it's just two. But imagine you have like a 100-node cluster. And Trump is actually going to talk a lot more, and he probably does, unfortunately. Um, so we probably need like the 100 nodes at some time, right? And then the combine function becomes more convenient because now you get like 100 intermediate results, and you just combine them uh, with the very inter uh, with, into the final um, into the final result. And the last thing is we take the combined value and write it to the sink. Executing that means that we now take this, this DAG that we created, and this time we created it ourselves, and we put it into Hazelcast and say, please execute it. Right, you remember that the cluster, uh, can, or that the Java Util stream-based API can do this for you, but this time you could say, okay, I don't only have like this one source, but I have multiple sources. And maybe I don't want to run, uh, maybe I don't want to read from Hazelcast, but from Hadoop, from a file system, from whatever. You're perfectly fine to read from everything you want. We actually have um, a prototype running which reads uh, uh, streaming values, so real-time streaming values directly from Kafka, processing them, writing them back to Kafka for, for a next step of operation. So, and, and that is an interesting thing because a lot of people ask me, I have five more minutes, that's pretty good. Um, a lot of people ask, so what is the difference between JET and Kafka? Normally what we try to, to explain to people, when you use streaming or when you want to stream values, use Kafka. If you want to do processing, a complex processing, and maybe not like this simple graph here, but in term, uh, having multiple input sources, whatever, that is where Hazelcast JET comes into the game. It's not like you're using one or the other, but you combine them. 
The interesting thing compared to things like Spark, it is actually real-time processing. So it does a one, um, 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 a one operation at a time processing. So when you stream something in, it will, in, uh, it will calculate it immediately. It doesn't do micro-batching. And now let's, do I still have my two servers running? No, I don't. So I restart them. Come on, connect. Dum, dum, dum. You're wasting my five minutes. There you go. And now we actually use this example and we can run it. And this time it is actually, uh, as you can see here, it is sorted. So I, we get exactly what we had, right? Great American job. Good America. Um, um, there is one other interesting one right here somewhere. Um, uh, where is it? Yeah. Military batter dollar system. Uh, it sounds very Trumpy, right? <laughs> Whoops, there we go. Okay, so sometimes little secrets just work, right? We hope that it will not be too secret in the future. So with that, we're at the end, and I'm three minutes into it, so that's perfect. So I want to thank CBS for making this amazing slide deck possible, and I want to thank the cast, obviously, as well. Um, and on the other page, I'm trying to keep myself away from any kind of copyright infringement. <laughs> So, questions? Okay. Questions? There you go. Does everything run in memory? And what happens? How do you like define the memory footprint and the maximum limit of that if it runs like on a production system that already runs other stuff so that it doesn't get like completely out of control? Um, yeah, so for, for Hazelcast, same as for Hazelcast IMDG, for Jet, everything runs in memory, except you use data sources, which is, for example, Hadoop. So you could store information like into a data lake into Hadoop and say, okay, my input source or my, my, my source is not a Hazelcast map, so I don't want to store it into memory because it probably doesn't fit. Um, I use something else. Um, the way it works, as I said, Hazelcast JAD is a stream engine. So it will actually not really store a lot of intermediate data except your calculation or your processing requires those intermediate values. Um, the way it works is the better you can distribute your algorithm and the more machines you can put on it, it means the more RAM you actually have for, for distributing. Um, we're currently working, so for Hazelcast IMDG Enterprise, we have an off-heap implementation where you can store data outside of the Java heap. Um, we're currently working on bringing that to Hazelcast Jet to actually store those intermediate data off-heap as well, but that will take a while. It will probably be like another couple of okay, months. Thanks. Thanks for a wonderful presentation. Um, I have a question about uh, the edges in your example, uh, because if uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, it was like uh, uh, we didn't have any s uh, not cycles, but uh, uh, we had a straight graph with yeah. vertices and edges between. Uh, can you give us an example where we actually have? Uh, uh, it's not a straight graph, if I can say this. And uh, is it common that uh, users of JET shoot themselves in the legs with wrong edges? So um, that that for example, so there are two different things. I'm not 100% sure what, what you're looking for. So in a directed acyclic graph, you can't have like um, uh, circular dependencies. So you can't go back into in, in the system. Uh, that's what the directed means. It always goes one direction. But you can do branching like here, right? So the vertex could split off and say, well, based on the value, I might go that way or I might go that way. Um, and that way you can actually build like a pretty complex system. Um, the problem with uh, circular um, calculation is that you probably end up in, in uh, an infinitive, infinitive loop and you don't want to do those kinds of things. 
if that answers the question. Otherwise, yeah. Uh, I have uh, another question. Is the, this Hazelcast Jet completely different product from Hazelcast or they're dependent on each other? Um, that's a very good question. I'm sorry, I forgot the second part of your question. Um, do, uh, like, uh, is it a common use case for Hazelcast Jet users? Um, yeah, so the, the question or the answer to that is different, or is simple, not different, it's simple. Uh, there aren't any Jet users yet. Everyone is in prototype stage because it doesn't even reach Hazelcast Jet 1.0 yet. So that is very early stage. As I said, the API is still like playing around and generics are missing. So coming back to your question, um, just give me a hint, what was it? Sorry. What was the difference between the, the, the Hazelcast and the Hazelcast? Are they two oh, different right, right. products? Oh, right, right, yeah. So um, Hazelcast Jet works completely on Hazelcast. The interesting thing is, uh, if I go to the, to the code, um, so what actually happens is the Jet team is an independent team in itself, so they work independently, but what they do is they shade the original Hazelcast into Jet. So Jet itself can run standalone. It doesn't need a Hazelcast cluster to be deployed on top of that, but you could do it. So there, there are like, independent projects in a way that so one project uses the other one. So if I have an existing Hazelcast cluster, I can use it with yeah. Jet client, but I don't have to, okay? Yeah, you don't have to. You can use Hazel, uh, Hazelcast Jet as a client for an existing Hazelcast cluster. Any other questions or? I think we're out of time anyways. Thank you.